Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us uh, recall what we had said in the last class. We had actually constructed the Lagrangian of the semi-definite programming problem SDP and then we proved that <coughs> if the following two assumptions 1 and 2 that you see on the screen, if these two are satisfied that x hat is in S n plus plus and uh, kernel of A star is equal to 0, then if you take these two conditions, then what would you have is the following that there would be a y bar element of minus S n plus or a S bar element of S n plus such that this thing holds. It is like a saddle bond condition that you know in standard convex optimization, but we are looking at the whole thing from the perspective of SDP as a problem and trying to handle it. Now, what you have here is the following, then this would uh, tell me that this is happening and this is what you get where I am setting S bar equal to this. Now, then for this you apply the standard optimality condition for convex optimization and that would lead to these conditions. Now, is it the same S bar that you will give this difference? That is the whole question or if this S bar is something else. The thing is that this S bar that you see here is an extra condition that we get when we study SDP. It is not that something which is associated with this. So, what we can show is that if you look at uh, x bar and c minus a star y, then you would clearly see one thing that this is nothing c x bar minus x bar into a star y and by the definition of my adjoint, this is nothing but a x bar. So, this is these are matrices, so a, a x bar y. So, x bar is the matrix here. Here what you see is a multiplication between two matrices that has been converted into multiplication between vectors, uh, inner product between vectors, multiplication in higher dimension is inner product. So, this is nothing but C of x bar minus B of y. Now, if you observe what we have, now this because strong duality holds because an x bar is the solution. So, c of x bar is minus b of y bar is greater than equal to 0. So, you will always for from the duality point of view you always have this weak duality result. Now, what happens is the following, this is always true, now this is what you get. Now, C x bar is the primal one and B y bar is the dual one, right. Now, what I have to show is that this product is 0. So, if I write C minus A star y as some z element of S n plus, basically my aim is to show x bar z bar is equal to 0. Now, what we have got we have we know that the strong duality holds that is c x bar the solution. So, this is greater than 0. So, c x bar minus p y would be equal to 0 if y is a solution of the dual.
right because y is a solution of the dual strong duality will give me this equal to 0 which you already have an idea of. So, I miss the bar sign here on y it should be y bars here uh, this is just I am sure you can figure out this mistake. Now if I calculate theta of y bar which is equal to mean of L x y bar where x is element of S n plus then it implies that this is nothing that theta y bar is nothing but the value of S d p and that is same as value of the dual of S d p which is and what is theta y bar theta y bar value of dual of S d p this is the value which will be nothing but b y bar that will be the value. So, theta y bar is value of S d p value of d S d p. So, if the value of the dual problem would be given by b y bar. So, in fact you can prove that y bar is actually the value of S d p. So, if you look at theta y bar what is uh, the dual problem it is maximize theta y bar over y bar element of R m right. Basically the dual problem in our case basically this is same as writing maximize sorry not theta y y. C minus A star y is element of S n plus and y is element of R n. So, theta y. So, the minimum of this is equal to B y bar if this is true, but this is already true. So, I already know that C minus A star y bar from our previous result this result this is already element of S n plus plus and theta y bar which corresponds to the objective value of the dual variable which is same as b y bar that is the theta y bar is the maximum dual objective value. The dual objective value theta y bar is actually nothing is same as has the same value as b y bar. So, that is why b y bar is equal to theta y bar and that is equal to 0. So, that uh, sorry that is why C x bar minus B y bar this part is equal to 0 because what you have done you have shown that y bar is dual feasible and theta y bar is actually the value of the dual and what is theta y bar? Theta y bar is B y bar if this holds true. So, if this is holding true so theta y bar must be B y bar. So, if this result holds true if this fact holds true then theta y bar is B y bar and we know already that this holds true. So, theta y bar is B y bar and we have proved very simply from the way basic uh, fact here by using this fact that theta y bar again is nothing but the value of S d p which by duality because all the conditions of duality satisfied is value of d S d p and this is this and so this is equal to 0. So, what we now get, get is that if I put this equal to z bar x bar z bar is equal to 0. So, my k k t conditions for H d p is as follows. So, I will have that if x bar is a solution of S d p, x bar is a solution of S d p if and only if is a convex problem. So, it is an if and only if you know this very well k k t conditions are both necessary and sufficient. x bar is a solution of S d p if and only if there exists y bar element of R m and z bar element of S n plus such that. So, such that A star y bar plus z is equal to c 
a of x is equal to b and x z is equal to 0. But there is a very interesting result which says that if x and s x and z so you take any two matrices x and z so this is a standard result since this is in s n plus and this is in s n plus both are in s n plus then what would happen is the following it would be like this that this equal to 0 if and only if x bar z bar this product is equal to 0. So, your k k t condition can now be framed for S D P can be framed as the k k t conditions can now be framed as that if x bar is a solution of S D P if and only if this exists such that S star y bar plus z bar minus c is equal to 0, a x bar minus b is equal to 0 and x bar z bar is equal to 0, where x bar is element of S n plus and z bar is element of S n plus. So, when you want to develop the interior point methods, the relaxed KKD condition that you use is the following. is or takes a thing of this form. So, instead of 0 you put some mu into i. So, this is the relaxed k k t condition for the S D B problem and deriving doing something with this trying to develop a Newton method for this can also lead to interior point methods for S D P and I P methods for S D P exist when we will and they are polynomial time and we will try to discuss a bit towards the end of this our discussion, but we will not give too much stress to it. So, I am just showing a path by which you can do I P methods for S D P. There is a software called Sedumi for semi definite programming. So, there is a software which you can use and download it from the net and try to solve uh, semi definite programming problems, may not be of very large scale, but quite in standard scale you can uh, do it. Now, in before jumping into this bandwagon of what is how can we really solve semi definite programming problems, it is having it should be useful to know why semi definite programming is so exciting. It is not that because I just found that I can write linear programming in a semi definite programming problem and for SDP I can write uh, IP methods which are polynomial time, but we had also just discussed that for linear programming problem we can write methods which are polynomial time. So, it is not that S D P is the only relation between S D P is only use is you know maybe trying to solve uh, linear programming problems. You see uh, we will talk about now the relation between integer programming and S D P. So, we will consider a very standard quadratic integer programming problem and x i for each i has to be either minus 1 or plus 1, there are two options. 
So, this is a very important class of problems called integer programming problem, where q is a symmetric matrix. You could assume it to be positive semi definite also does not matter. Now, how do I uh, integer programming is a very difficult by its very nature because if n is very large then it is one might say what is the problem just uh, you find out the variables which have this minus 1 or plus 1 values uh, that there are actually if you take in two dimensions then it is fine you know uh, it is there are four possible cases and then you just figure out with the four possible cases what is the function value. But the question is if there if I am talking about uh, much much higher dimensions and n is very large. So, there are huge number of values and it is not possible to evaluate the computer will heavily slow down if you want to make a direct enumeration. So, how do you solve such difficult problems? So, integer programming if we could have solved discrete optimization problem there would have been no study of optimization theory and it would would not have been at all any an, an, an exciting game. It is an exciting game because we know lot about continuous programming we will know about lot about continuous optimization the things that we had discussed where there was nothing no discreteness of this nature in the feasible set. This discreteness is very important because this is practical practical pro problems demand discreteness. And so, from, from the practice point of view this integer programming problem or discrete optimization problems are very very important. But how do we, but on the other hand we have much better solution methods and very clear cut te uh, techniques or other technologies to solve uh, convex uh, continuous optimization problems. So, how can I convert this sort of problems into a continuous problem and try to solve them. So, one equivalent formulation in the continuous form is as follows. So, I am writing down an equivalent formulation which is given as follows it says minimize you can put half x q x also does not matter subject to here it was So, I have now what n constraints this is g 1 x g 2 x g 3 x but all, all of them are equality constraints. So, now I have converted this problem into a problem with a quadratic problem with quadratic equality constraints. Now, if I construct the Lagrangian of this function let me just write lie, write let me just write down the uh, problem again uh, for your remembrance. So, I am having a problem of this sort minimize this subject to now what you do is let us write down the Lagrangian of the problem which we already know how to write down. y i has no sign here because it is with equality constraints this is my Lagrangian function. Now, I can write down the Lagrangian function in a much more compact way is as following. So, L x y can be written as so this is my I p problem integer programming problem. where d y is the diagonal matrix now if i now if i want to find the dual of lagrangian dual of this problem what i have to do is to find theta y which is to minimize L x y over x element of R n. Now, this minimum value if you observe that if this is always greater than equal to 0 
then this is greater than equal to 0. So, this is if this is always greater than equal to 0 for every x means this is positive semi definite. So, which means my dual problem dual IP is given as the problem of maximizing minus E y subject to the linear matrix inequality. So, this is also semi definite pro this is a semi definite programming problem because it is in the form of a dual of a SDP problem and dual of a SDP problem is also an SDP problem dual of I p is an S d p problem. So, you see a very important class. So, now I can solve the dual the S d p there may, may need not be because it is a non convex problem then there need not be strong duality holding between uh, these two uh, the original problem and the dual problem, but by solving the dual which can be done by using semi techniques from semi definite programming, we can immediately tell you what is the lower bound to the original integer programming problem. And in integer programming problem in these sort of problems we are actually looking for bounds, we are looking for lower bounds on the minimum value, we are not immediately wanting to find the exact solution. So, this is very one very very useful area where uh, semi definite programming can come in. In fact, if you write down the dual of this semi definite programming problem, this, uh, uh, this problem as you take the dual of this problem, then you will see that it will be it will look like exactly a semi definite programming problem and it will come in terms of the problem data. Where this vector E, I, I am not writing every time, E is this. So, here we see how a problem uh, of quite high level difficulty of as an integer programming problem can be approximated very fast in terms of a much more simpler and tractable problem the semi definite programming problem. So, this is something very important there is a non convex problem you are actually formalizing it in such way that they become convex optimization problems uh, they become that, that you look look it through the eye of a convex optimization problem even if you have taken Q to be PSD. that does not matter q p s d has no saying q to be p s d has no saying because the way by the very simple fact that if q is p s d does not matter this ultimately this is a non convex set. So, minimizing convex functions over a non convex set is a non convex optimization. So, non convex optimization is been approximated fast and some information can be generated about its solution by solving a convex optimization problem, which is in the form of an SDB problem and that is why semi definite programming problems are so important. This is actually called a semi definite relaxation of the original problem. So, now you have a fairly uh, nice idea of what a semi definite programming problem is and how it could be useful. So, and I have already given you a hint how KKD conditions are developed and how they can be put into the framework used for solve used in the IP methods for solving linear programming problems. Now, because we are taking a tour of convex optimization let us take a little bit of detour. So, what is this detour meaning? So, we will get into a slightly different stuff. So, we had been talking about linear programming and SDP almost looks similar like it the whole all the functioning, but it is not it is very powerful because it is a convex optimization problem which you are almost talking as if you are doing a linear programming problem. So, we will get into a slightly different stuff. In actual optimization it is not always possible to get the minimum. For example, if I take a simple function from R to R and it is a convex function f x is equal to e to the power minus x. 
so uh, what is happening is that you see if I take this function and if I just try to draw the graph of this function this is x and this is your y axis your f x. So, at 0 it is 1, so it is 0 1 through this 0 1 point this thing is coming and going down and down and down and down. It goes as near as possible to the x axis, but never touches the x axis. So, the infimum value of f is 0 that it is a lower bound or the greatest lower bound is 0, but there is no x in R for which so the minimum is not attained. minimum or infimum in this case is not attained. So, what can we say of such situation, but if the infimum or the lower bound exists if you give me any epsilon greater than 0 then there would exist by definition there would exist an x star such that f of x star is less than equal to inf of f say over r n if you do not mind plus epsilon. If you change the epsilon this x star will get changed. So, once I given give the epsilon you are always able to find this x star. So, any x star which given an epsilon which if it satisfies this property it is called x star is called an epsilon minimum of f over r n. In real applications we are essentially looking for epsilon minimum we do not want to find the exact minimum as we have uh, seen in when we were studying uh, the complexity of interior point methods for uh, linear programming problem. We wanted to stop when the duality measure comes down below a threshold epsilon we want to stop the algorithm. So, basically what you get is some sort of approximate solutions and not the solutions that um, not the exact one in most cases you do not find exact solutions. So, now how to characterize such solutions. In case of convex functions which we are interested in there is a notion called epsilon sub differential we have already no we already have studied the notion of the sub differential here we are looking at the notion of an epsilon sub differential. The epsilon sub differential which for which we define as follows at any point x naught is given as set of all xi in R n or say let us just change it say v in R n such that f x minus f x naught is bigger than v times x minus x naught minus epsilon for all x. Now, this del epsilon x naught is very important from the point of view of algorithms, important from computational viewpoint. So, what do I get? What do I get here is as follows. See here even if this uh, function is differentiable it does not tell me that this epsilon sub differential which is 
a convex set it need not be it need not become uh, a single turn that is very very important. So, if f from R n to R is convex and epsilon greater than 0 is given to us then x star is an epsilon minimum if and only if which is usually used this sign is used if and only if 0 is belonging to now very uh, sorry 0 is belonging to del f e x star. Now one important thing to note that this function this one del f e x star so del e f e x naught in general del epsilon f e x naught is not equal to phi for all x naught in R n. So, this is a very very important aspect of this uh, sub differential that it is never m empty right. Now okay, what would happen if my function is continue if it is differentiable what because I cannot say anything about the sub differential uh, uh, about the epsilon sub differential uh, that okay, it will be nothing but grad f x I mean grad f x naught. So, what can I say if the function is differentiable if f is differentiable this would lead us to the study of the Eckelon's variational principle. The Eckelon's variational principle which is a far reaching result in the theory of optimization uh, is a very very powerful one and it tells us how an approximate solution actually behaves. So, we are now going to write down the Eckelon's variational principle and we will show how Eckelon's variational principle can be used. See, uh, Eckelon's variational principle says the following. So, given epsilon greater than 0, suppose there exists x in R n such that f of x is less than inf. plus epsilon. Then for any lambda greater than 0, there exists y element of R n such that number 1. So, for any lambda strictly greater than 0 there exists y lambda uh, y. So, y of course, depends on lambda which I let me just write y depends on lambda. Such that norm of y minus x less than epsilon by lambda number 2 f of y is less than equal to f of x number 3 y is the minimizer of the function it 
So, if I take this function y is the minimizer of this function that is the whole thing. So, this is something which is important and we should keep in mind. So, what it says that okay, let your function original function need not have a minimum and it has a epsilon minimum and let this be the epsilon minimum. Then I can find some epsilon another epsilon point near it. So, that that point is a part is a exact minima rather a unique minima of a part of function. So, this is my part of function this is exactly the part of function. and this is my original function. Now, if f is convex and x, x star is an epsilon minimum what can I say. that and assume f is differentiable. So, tomorrow we are going to compute these facts and we are going to show what happens if we take this question. A very interesting fact will emerge and you will see that even if the function does not have a exact minima and if the fun convex function is differentiable we can tell a lot about the characterization of its inexact minima. So, so basically we are having an exact inexact minima or epsilon minima and we are finding another epsilon minima right because if this is true then I can put this is less than f y. So, the f y is also an epsilon minima which is a unique minimizer of some other uh, function. So, this part of function plays the fundamental role in this uh, story. So, I would just like you to take a look at this very very carefully because this is a very very important result and it is very very important to it is of great importance to know this result if you are going to study optimization theory. Because in actual practice you are going to look at only epsilon minimizers you are not going to look at true minimizers. So, tomorrow we are going to discuss starting up from here what happens when x star is epsilon minima and what can I say that if it is if it is f is further differentiable. And for that you would have to know a very very important result which says if you take the norm function and find the derivative at 0 this is nothing, but the unit ball that is the ball of radius 1 centered at 0. And this fact would be used in tomorrow's we, we have to use it here in, in tomorrow's discussion. Thank you.